All right, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day today. Day Sunday the thirteenth. I know football's going on, so they, that's pretty much like a men's soap opera going on. Some uh, great games. I think they had a game in Germany. All right, maybe they're trying to test the market out there. This is the NFL. All right. I mean, it's all a market. You have to look at these sports. And between that and the media and these sponsors, it is a business. And I like to start by saying this, okay? Don't trust none of these guys, okay? None of them. That they're, or to a certain extent, they're businessmen. <clears throat> a lot, I'm not going to say a lot, but I'm not going to say, uh, yeah, but many of them, all right? They boule, okay? They they sold out, and you know they pretty much about getting that money. I mean, but they in the end of the day, I guess they got to make a living like the next man. But um, I wanted to talk about Kyrie Irving, and this is gonna be the last time I'm gonna make a video about this because I just think that again that these comments that he made was is and the way that it was dealt with all right this this damn buck breaking or whatever they, they call it is just something that's souped up to be bigger than, than what it is but you also have to look at those comments sometimes it, there's a thing called impact versus intent all right that the the impact all right had caused a ripple effect okay uh, so this guy to say to say, he's the owner of the Nets and also the commissioner of the NBA Ad Adam Silver. OK, had changed the tone about Kyrie Irving's uh, comments, those anti uh, alleged anti-Semitic comments. Now, I like to say this. <coughs> I stand with Kirby, uh, Kyrie Irving. He did not say anything anti-Semitic just because he mentioned uh, the Hebrews, you know, had were darker color people. Okay, that does not mean that you're uh, anti-Semitic. Okay, but he just brought up, you know, facts. All right. So I understand the truth. I understand walking in faith and all that other stuff. I get it. Okay, but. I say this time and time again, all right, that in this world that's called the corporate world, it's not that and faith or that corporate world and wokeism is not a good a good mix. It's like Hennessy and doggone Diet Coke, okay, or Pepsi. It's just not the same as Coke, all right, okay? And I do agree that the owner of the Nets had reacted as as well as uh, the NBA commissioner and did not uh, listen to actually listen to what he said. But again, I don't know that we live in a very uh, in a society where everything is so culturally, you know, sensitive and so forth. So and him being again as prolific as he is this is Kyrie Irving you really have to choose one or the other and that's just the truth okay whether again it's gonna be business or wokeism okay truth or basketball and I'm gonna say this again and this is gonna be my last time that, uh, saying it in my professional opinion the owner, they wanted to give him something, okay? Because, again, for the last year and a half, two years, he pretty much missed, I want to say, I'll be willing to bet maybe almost 100 games, 75, 100 games, okay? So from their standpoint, if they lose games, all right, they lose money. They lose revenue. This is the owner of the Nets, all right? And although... 
the owner, it, apparently they're going to forgive him. They're just not going to let it go. And I think even though Kyrie Irving does probably case is dismissed, excuse me for saying this, I think his, convert, uh, his conditions are very shitty, all right, to where NBA teams moving forward for at least this year are going to be reluctant to pick, to pick Kyrie Irving up. Okay, and I think that he's gonna, you know, he he's basically went through a storm, a, a humiliation ritual. All right, they're really not gonna let it go. I mean, it's one of the things that's forgiven, but I'm thinking he's gonna have to go through, still go through some training. And right now, he's a character risk for the NBA because his profile right now is too long, uh, it's too large. All right. So I'm not sure when he's supposed to come back again. All right, could be the 13th, could be the 20th from reports or whatever. Uh, but right now, I just think that it probably, you know, being out of the NBA for a little time, a little, a uh, little while, and he will be back, I believe, before the end of this, this month. That gives some time for this ordeal to simmer and settle. All right. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure throughout the league, there's probably some type of memorandum been sent out based off this because they, they, again, they, they're going to make an example out of him through our players or whatever. Okay. To be very selective on their talk about, you know, anti-Semitic, uh, anti-Semitism, okay. Or like wokeism. But I believe that again, that there's, if there's true spoken, and there's wokeism spoken, I believe that there's going to be some type of repercussions somewhere along the line. And it's funny that they wait until this man is up on contract, okay, to, to do this type of stuff, okay, to be like this uh, towards Kyrie Irving, okay? They try to buck break, and they're going to try to buck break him a little bit, okay? Just, I guess, to show from their perspective, you know, who's running things so far, all right? So they want to, again, they want to give him something. So let's see how uh, this thing uh, turns out here. That's just my opinion, all right, that, again, that things are deeper than just wokeism. Um, there's something else I want to say, but if, if I get around to say it, uh, if I get around to think about it, I'll put it out. But let me know what you think about this video. Thank you for your time. Like, uh, subscribe, share, and uh, check out some of the other videos here.